The RDW percentage is a significant predictor of biological age, and that's what we can see here. So this is, these are the nine biomarkers and chronological age. These are the predictors of biological age using Dr. Morgan Levine's biological age calculator, PhenoAge. So on the left, we've got those 10 variables, and on the right, we've got how much they contribute to the prediction of biological age. Now, if you had to guess, probably glucose would be the most significant predictor or contributes the most to the prediction of biological age using any biological age test. But using this test, that's not true. The top predictor or the biomarker that contributes most to the prediction of biological age using Levine's test is the red blood cell distrib distribution width or RDW percentage. So what is the RDW percentage? So it's a measure of the standard deviation for red blood cell volume. Intuitively, that still doesn't make any sense. So visually, we can see what that means here. On the left, we've got the situation where there's a low RDW percentage. In other words, all the red blood cells, or mostly all of the red blood cells, are the same volume. So the standard deviation for red blood cell volume is relatively small. That's a low RDW percentage. In contrast, on the right, you can see that there's a heterogeneous population of red blood cells in terms of size and volume, with some that are very large and some that are very small. A large volume and a small volume. That will be a situation where there's a relatively higher RDW percentage. All right, so then what's optimal for the RDW percentage? And also, which factors may optimize it? So first, the RDW percentage increases during aging, and that's what we can see here, with RDW percentage on the y-axis plotted against age from about 20 to 95 years on the x. And then we can see that there is this, uh, an age-related increase for the RDW percentage. Now, the significance of the age-related increase for the RDW percentage is that a relatively higher level is associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. And that's what we can see here. So there's a lot of different colored uh, uh, shapes on this plot. And that's because the shapes, different shapes, red, blue, and green, are the adjustments that the model was, uh, was included in the model for the association with, for RDW percentage with all-cause mortality risk. Now, what I care about the most is the fully adjusted model, and that's the data in green that included an adjust, adjustment for demographics, morbidities, and other lab values. And then, in terms of what's significant, uh, we put up a red line at a hazard ratio of 1, and note that this is a study of 3.2 million people. If anyone's come across a larger study for RDW and all-cause mortality risk, please post it in the comments, and this study and all the other studies will be in the video's description. So in terms of what's significant, we put up that hazard ratio at one, red line at one, and then when the 95% confidence interval, that's the horizontal line to the left and right of the green circle, when that's either completely below one or completely above one, we have a significant association. So in terms of that, we can see that lowest all-cause mortality risk was associated with an RDW percentage in the 11.4 to 12.6 range. And then an increase, significantly increased all-cause mortality risk in this study was associated with RDW values that were greater than 13.7%. Now note that also very low values of the RDW, less than 11.4, was significantly associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. But you can see in the RDW percentiles, that was in 0.1 to 0.01% of the population. In other words, 1 in 1,000 to 1 in 10,000 had uh, RDW levels that were less than 11.4%, so very rare. It's more likely when considering the age-related increase for RDW to see relatively higher values compare, when compared with values less than 11.4. All right, so in terms of what's optimal for the RDW, based on the all-cause mortality data, 11.4 to 12.6, and when considering the aging data, we don't want it to be 11.5, 11.8, 12.2, 12.5. That's still an age-related increase. We want to try to resist any age-related increase for the RDW, even within that quote-unquote optimal range. Which then brings us to which factors may optimize the RDW. So in at least one study, the omega-3 index was associated with a relatively lower RDW, which we'll get to in a second. So first, what is the omega-3 index? That's the proportion of omega-3 fatty acids, including the sum of EPA and DHA, that are found in red blood cell membranes. And then in terms of the data, we've got the RDW percent on the y-axis plotted against the omega-3 index on the x. And here we can see that as the proportion of EPA and DHA in red blood cell membranes increases, and that's up to about uh, an omega-3 percentage of about 5%, we can, see, we can see that RDW percentage declines from about 13.8 to 13.5.
And I've written, but only within that range because we can see at higher omega-3 indexes up to more than 9%. So more than 9% of the total fatty acids that are red blood cell membranes were EPA and DHA. The RDW percent was still around 13.5. Still too high when considering that the all-cause mortality data suggests that 11.4 to 12.6 is associated with lowest risk of death for all causes. Now we can, in contrast to measuring it, uh, measuring the omega-3 index, EPA and DHA in red blood cell membranes, plasma levels of EPA and DHA can be tracked. And I've been doing that using Iolo's at-home metabolomics kit. And if you want to measure your own plasma levels of omega-3, there's a discount link in the video's description. Now, I measured uh, five times in 2023, but unfortunately only two of those tests, I also did venipuncture. In other words, I have RDW values that I can correlate with plasma levels of omega-3 and um, uh, of uh, omega-3 EPA and DHA. Now, I plan on testing at least five more times in 2024 in conjunction with all of those tests, uh, measuring the RDW on the same day. So I'll be able to evaluate whether plasma levels of EPA and DHA are correlated or not with the RDW percentage. In contrast, I've been tracking diet since 2015, weighing all my food with a food scale, logging it into chronometer, and then putting that data manually into a spreadsheet. So I can address the question, is dietary omega-3 intake significantly correlated with the RDW percentage? And since 2015, I have 46 blood tests over that period. So what does that data have to show? And that's what we'll see here. So on the y-axis, we've got the RDW percentage plotted against my average daily omega-3 intake in grams. And for those who are new to the channel or who may be unfamiliar, for two blood tests, say there's a 60-day period in between, because I'm tracking diet every day and I know my dietary intake, the average dietary intake for that 60-day period then corresponds with the latter test. So every blood test has a corresponding average daily dietary intake. And because I now have up to 50 tests for many of these blood biomarkers, I can look at correlations in the data to see which aspect of diet may be driving blood biomarkers. And I try to improve the blood biomarkers to move them towards health and youth by altering diet, by following the correlations. So when considering the, uh, the, the data here, average daily omega-3 intake versus the RDW percentage, percentage, we can see that there's a significant inverse correlation. In other words, for relatively high average daily omega-3 intakes that correspond to blood tests, the RDW is lower. In contrast, when my average daily dietary omega-3 intake was lower, the RDW, uh, that was cor significantly correlated with a higher RDW going in the wrong direction. But another variable has a stronger correlation with the RDW percentage, and that's calorie intake, which is what we'll see here. So same setup, RDW percentage on the y-axis, but now on the x, we've got average daily calorie intake. And here we can see a significant positive correlation between average daily calorie intake with the RDW percentage, with that correlation coefficient of 0.68 compared to the negative 0.41 for the uh, omega-3, daily omega-3 intake. And note that the p-value in both situations is less than 0.05, so we have a significant uh, correlation. So in other words, when calorie intake is relatively higher, that's significantly correlated with a higher RDW, at least in my data. And when calorie intake is relatively lower, that's been significantly correlated with lower RDW, a lower RDW percentage. All right, so this raises the question though, is a lower calorie intake driving the significant correlation for dietary omega-3 with the RDW percentage? In other words, after adjusting for calorie intake, is dietary omega-3 significantly correlated with the RDW percentage? So to address that, I derived a a multivariate linear regression model, which sounds a lot more fancy than it is. In that model, we've got omega-3 and calories. So after adjusting for calorie intake, is omega-3, average daily omega-3 intake, significantly correlated with the RDW? And as we can see there, it's not. So this suggests that if the goal is to reduce the RDW, at least in my data, reducing calorie intake may be beneficial. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links that you may be interested in, including discount links for epigenetic testing, NED quantification, oral microbiome composition, at-home metabolomics, at-home blood testing with Cyfox Health, which includes APOB, and a totally different profile, or almost totally different profile than the at-home metabolomics, green tea, diet tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch. 
So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Dietrion brand as I've got on here, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.